Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today we are going to talk about how to get started building your DIY CNC router. Uh, I've got an email here recently, uh, today, and somebody asked me, where do I start? So this is, that's kind of what prompted this video, and I'm just going to go over exactly how, if I was to do it again, the steps I would take and how I'd start and what order I would take the process and that way it worked more smoothly through the through the the time I mean because when I did it I had a lot of hang-ups I did a lot of waiting on parts I didn't order them in time so basically I'm just going to go over that stuff and uh, hopefully help some people through their builds let's get started okay so when getting started first things first determine the size of the table you want I mean are you wanting a tabletop or you want a freestanding machine like this one is I mean clearly for a machine this size you're gonna to have to have some designated space for it I just happen to have a little extra room off of my shop that was about 200 square feet perfect for this I mean I had a place for it and I was just fortunate to have the space but if you're really doing a machine this size you're really gonna to have to have the room you're gonna to have to have room to walk all the way around this thing and be able to freely move with nothing obstructing any part of the movement of the machine. I mean, you can't have anything leaning up against it or even being real close because your gantry will slide back and forth hit stuff. Those are things you got to look at first. And if, if you're getting a bigger table like this, I mean, that's your biggest inhibitor is space. But you now if you're wanting a small tabletop one, you can do a, you know, a little two by two one, something you could pick up and carry. You can have one of those, keep it in the garage, and move it to a table when you were going to use it. So that's the very first thing I'd be thinking about, the size. How big are you going to want, and what kind of space do you have to do it in? Secondly, the thing I would be looking at is the material I'm going to use to build the frame and, and most of the components out of. I mean, I've clearly went with steel. I've seen them made with wood. Uh, and another big favorite is aluminum. If I was going to do anything other than steel, I personally would have gone with aluminum other than the fact that I'd have had to learn to TIG weld. I've never welded aluminum. I would love to be able to. My machine, I've got a big welder that is capable of it. I just haven't got it set up for that. So that would be the second thing I would look at is the material that I was going to use. Uh, I don't know that any, one thing's any greater than the other. I mean, my fear with wood would be all the motion and the movement, the wood would get wallered out in the areas you have connected where you have it bolted together or however you have it put together. You know, just all the torquing and the movement on the machine, I think over time would, to me, would wear out a wooden one. Maybe not. I mean, I've seen several of them and I've seen some that are very cleverly done out of wood and they look great and they make great products. So those are your two biggest things right off the bat you got to be thinking about is the size of the machine, and I'm going to say two, three things. I mean, the size of the machine, the space that you have to use to keep this thing and where you're going to run it at, and thirdly, the material you're going to use to build the frame out of. And like I've always said, the reason I went with steel is I am familiar with working with metal. I've done quite a bit of building out of it. I've got the stuff to do the welding. So that cost me nothing to get that going. Okay, so the next thing, you've decided your size, you've decided your material. The, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, go ahead and order whatever size linear rails, whatever size ball screw or all thread or whatever you're using for a drive system. I mean, there's that can get off into something else. I went with linear rails. They have linear slides. I don't know how good or bad they are. I've never used them, haven't even seen a machine with them, but I haven't been around a ton of these machines. Uh, I went with a linear rail. It made the most sense for me because ball bearings, the smooth travel, that's what I was after. The ball screw, again, I went with ball screw because it has ball bearings in there running. It has limited backlash and it has smooth travel. Now, I mean, you can, your drive system can be rack and pinion. 
Uh, I've seen belt driven stuff. And again, I don't know that any one's any better than the other. The ball screws seem the simplest thing for me to wrap my head around when I started building, and I'm completely pleased with the ball screw. But what I'm saying is order these right off the bat. I mean, you might start putting your frame together. Go ahead and order these. Because by the time you get to your railing system at the top and looking at your gantry, you'll want these here to determine placement, the extra length you're going to need on the top rail. Back here on the back of mine, after I put all this in and I had my frame built to right here, only then did I realize, hey, I'm going to have to kick that out a little bit so I can put my pillow box and mount my motors. So be thinking about that when you're building the frame, your top rail, go ahead and extend that thing out. You won't have to add all this mess that I've put back here. Okay, so I just stopped real quick there to cover up a couple of windows because the light was just drowning me out. So anyway, yeah, when you have your ball screw and your linear uh, rails already here, you can determine how far this top rail needs to be out and kind of what you're needing to do with it. I mean, you can see I just did a little kick out right here on this little pillow block and just set it out beside the rail. You may be able to figure out a little different system, a little smoother system for it. This works. And so you've got your linear rails here, you've got your top rail on, and you basically have the basic structure of your frame together. So your next thing is, is going to be to mount your linear rails and make them perfectly parallel. And that is hard if you're doing it by tape measure and hand. Here's my cheat. I happen to still have this piece of wood that is perfectly 90 degrees at both ends. It goes in between my rails and it snaps in and it's that way at both ends. That's the way I got them perfectly parallel and it's just an easy way to do it. So you can cut you just anything as long as it is perfectly straight and you've got 90 degree uh, ends on it. And then I just flushed it up to it. And I actually had two of these when I did it. I did one down here and I did one at the other end. And that way I just smashed it up to it. I went ahead and marked my holes where they're going to be, drilled the holes, and then put the rails on. And I'm perfectly parallel on my railing. So from your railing, go ahead and mount the ball screws. Your ball screws are going to be perfectly parallel to your uh, rails. Again, not hard. I don't remember. I used a block. I, I don't remember if it was a, it wasn't a two before, obviously. It's just a little bit thicker. I can't remember exactly what I put in between, but I just went between the rail and the ball screw and mounted it like that. It made me perfectly parallel on all of them like that. So just little simple cheats will, will speed this along, but like I said, once you have your railing in place, you've got it mounted, then, only then, do you start worrying about your gantry. Because your gantry is going to depend on the width of your rails, uh, your placement of things. Okay, so now we're ready to move to the gantry. And I'm going to say right now, as you're moving to the gantry, go ahead and order your motors. It, because by the time you get your gantry done, your motors should be in, and as soon as you have that done, you're going to be ready to mount some motors, and you're going to put power to it. I mean, that's the that's your goal. I mean, each step is just just a milestone while you're doing it. Because I mean, you're I'm sure you're going to be as excited about getting this thing built as I was. So the one thing I'll tell you, and I've told you in a video in the past when I was talking about the gantry and frame. I would kick the gantry up on side where I have it flat like this. I would kick it up on its side and I would I would mount the rails on the side of it like this. That way whenever you're you're mounting your Z slide up there where I have it goes back flat, you would just be mounted right to the back of the Z slide. It really would stop a lot of your construction. I mean, it, it would simplify things a lot. And it also, it just makes more sense. It's more efficient. Uh, you won't lose as much table space 
And the other thing I'm going to point out real quick since I'm talking about the, the efficiency in table space, look at your rails. If you're four foot, you want to have these probably at least out five foot. I mean, you want to be bumped out enough wider simply because right here at the end of your rails, you're going to hit right here on this side. Well, so then you're going to lose, you know, I don't know, four inches maybe at, on each side. Well, that's eight inches of your total width. So now you've gone from a 48 inch table to a 40 inch table, which this one has. I mean, I, I've limited myself on that. So just be keeping that kind of stuff in mind. So on your frame, when you're first building it, just go ahead and expect to build it, I would say at least six inches to a foot wider. That way you will have, you will get full travel. You can go all the way to the end of your rails. And your Z slide, I mean, you remember whenever I did this and I was telling you about it, I bought this Z slide. It was more expensive and it wasn't a bunch more expensive. It would have cost me about, I'd have got it made, I'd have saved 20 bucks by building it myself. And I don't know how long it would have taken me to put it together and to get all the components because it has ball screw in it. It's got two little linear rails in it. And they're smaller than these. So, I mean, you'd have had to figure all that up. To me, it just made more sense to buy that component than it did to build it. So, like I said, you, you get your gantry built. You get it on top of your rails first. Don't worry about the ball screws right off the bat. Just be sure that your plating will allow to hook to the ball screw. And so you've got your slides on top of your rails. Get those built. And then mount your gantry on a side like that simply because it's just, it's just more efficient. And I mean, you have less torque in your Z-axis whenever you're cutting on stuff because the whole point of my little gussets here is to limit the flex whenever a bit's going into stuff and it doesn't flex much. I mean, I've actually got a 90 degree angle behind that out of steel. It's not going to move it. But in the long run, it's just more efficient. So I would go with that style. Okay, so you've got your gantry built and you've got it mounted to your rails. You got your slide plates on. You go ahead and put your, you can hook your ball screws into it if you like and hook your uh, little plate, your little box under here that has the ball bearings. It Get that done and you've got your gantry on top of it. I would be going ahead and looking at ordering my Z-slide or having all the components already here to start building the Z-slide to go ahead and mount it on your vertical gantry. That's something else that needs to be coming. You've got your motors in now. I would go ahead and start figuring the mounts out for them, hooking them up. And I mean, you can see how I did mine. I did mine with 90 degree angle stuff. I mean, I, I built the 90 degrees and just drilled the holes and bolted them to it. So go ahead and be looking at that, getting that mounted together, and at night, whenever you're not working on it, I'd be researching because you're fixing to really come into the real difficult part, which is the wiring. And every machine's a little bit different. I mean, if you get the same components as I got, they probably will work just about exactly the same. But you're gonna be looking at wiring four drivers into a breakout board. You're gonna be looking at wiring the power sources to the drivers. Okay, so now you've got everything constructed. You've got your frame together. You've got your linear rails on, your ball screws. You've got your gantry on here. Hopefully by now you've got your Z-axis and you've mounted to the gantry. So you have that all together. You've got your mounters, motors mounted. And you're working on the wiring. So when you're out here in the shop, the next thing you need to look at is your waste board, your tabletop. And there are many ways to go with this. You can see what kind I did. I used T-Track. And uh, it's just a track that goes in here. It uses little T-bolts and my clamps. I mean, as you've seen, seen me use them many times. There are other ways of doing this. One of the most popular ways is called a vacuum table. That's where you come over to your table and it has multiple holes and it's compartmentalized. You hook a shop vac into the side and it sucks down on your wood. And so it holds it in place. 
that's something that I would like to upgrade to at some point just because the clamps do get to be a hassle because you're having to make the wood a little bigger so you don't hit your clamps which which believe me happens you do occasionally screw up and get into your clamps I've actually hit three of them but uh, so you just look at your tabletop I mean mine's out of MDF plywood and two befores and there are tons of kinds out there I mean that just shop around look around on YouTube and some of the other guys the way they put theirs together some of the tabletops are amazing mine's pretty basic and I did that for a reason simplicity rules I mean because there's not a lot to go wrong with it okay so just to recap uh, this was called getting started so the first thing you need to think of is the size of table you're going to do the material you're going to build it out of and once you've got those things determined and how big go ahead and order your linear rails and your ball screws that was a big mistake I made and it really helped me up I mean it, it helped me back for like two or three weeks because I was waiting these to get here so I could determine how they need to be mounted how wide everything the top rail needed to be everything like that so go ahead and get those ordered and just try to stay a step ahead as you're building as you get the frame built and the gantry built just know you need to go ahead and order the uh, motors that way you can be ready to hook these up and get your mounts put on by the time the gantry's done and while you're building the gantry go ahead and get your z slide ordered that way when you do get the gantry done you can go ahead and hook that up and and for whatever you're using your slide plates for i used i don't remember it's half inch uh, aluminum stock and i just cut it and made plates that everything rides on so just that's your, my biggest advice is as you're going be looking ahead and so you can order the components that are going to allow you just to keep a steady flow of work and just a place to uh, just look into the future and see where you need to be or where you're going to be and just stay ahead of the curve on that part of it okay so guys that's probably going to be about it for this video uh, I'm not going to get deep into electronics again. I'm not going to get deep into computer stuff with it again. That is something for later down the road as I, because I've got several people that are telling me they're building. So once we get to that point for them, I'll go ahead and try to do a more in-depth video over wiring, some of the wiring the way I did it. Because like I said, it's not necessarily going to work the same for their system. And uh, kind of some of the computer setup, we'll get into that later down the road when people start reaching that point. Uh, I just, I actually got an email today that asked, asked me, where do I start? And so that's kind of what prompted me to do this video is, well, this is the easiest way to start and things I didn't think of when I did do mine. So I did a lot of waiting on parts instead of staying ahead of the curve. So guys, thanks for watching. If you hadn't done so yet, please subscribe and I'll see you all next time.